Okay, hi guys. So today we are going to start up the uh, Shinko steam turbine. So uh, at this point right now, we already have the boiler online. We brought that up earlier this morning. And uh, now we need to start to warm up the lines that are going to go to the Shinko. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to warm up the uh, 1725 kPa header. And this is the header that goes all the way up to the Shinko turbine. And that'll be the steam that will be running through the turbine. So we're going to warm that line up and then we need to go and we need to drain out the condensate from the lines because we don't want to have condensate going into the turbine. So here's our bypass. So whenever we warm up anything, we want to warm it up on bypass. Uh, the other thing is, is we could have some condensate in here and we'll want to drain that. So let's start. Wrench. So we're just going to drain out some of the condensate. So we should start to get some steam on the bypass and maybe a little bit of condensate coming out of the dip right. Okay, so now we can see vapor coming out, so we can go ahead and we can close off the drip leg. So we got the condensate out of there. Okay, so we're in the turbine hall now, and so now that we're starting to warm up our 1725 kPa or 150-pound header, we need to get all the condensate out of the line. So now we're going to open up the drip legs on them so we can get all of that condensate, so we don't want to put that into the turbine. Okay guys, so we're back at the uh, 1725 kPa header. Uh, the bypass, basically I'm going to open it up wide. We're just going to try and equalize the pressure across the main valve. Once we do that, then we'll be able to open up the main valve and then we'll send all of our steam up to the turbine hall. Okay, so now we're going to open up the main valve from the steam header to the turbine. So we'll send the steam up there and then we'll drain all of the condensate out of the lines. Okay, so now our main steam header is open and if you have a look at the drain, we're blowing steam right now. There's steam and condensate coming out. So there's one drain here and there's another one on the other end. And those two, one comes from the drip leg, the other one is coming off the main header that's, that's coming into the plant. Okay, so now we just closed off the condensate drains on both sides. And now we have our traps in place. So we're going to use the traps now for us to drain any condensate. So we've got all the condensate out of the lines now. Okay. So we've gone ahead and we've drained all the condensate out of the, the 1725 kPa header. The next thing we have to do is we have to do a blast uh, and that's going to be 20 minutes to do the blast. So what we need to do is we need to go inside where the turbine is and we need to open up valving in order for us to, to do the blast. So this is our main steam valve here that goes into the turbine and below it, that's the valve that we're going to do the blasting with. And where we get our steam from is on this line here, this header here, and right now it's blocked here and it's blocked here. So we need to open these valves 
bring our steam down on this header here. And then we're going to blast through this valve here, which is a globe valve. When we first go to start up the steam turbo generator, we've got uh, steam in the, in the lines or coming through the lines. And because we're shut down along for a lot of our time, there's actually corrosion that's occurring in the lines, a little bit of scaling and stuff. So to make sure that that doesn't get into the turbine, for the first 10, 20 minutes, we actually blast the line. It's a process that we go through and we actually send the steam out and it comes up through this line down here at 250 psi there's some nozzles inside here which drops the pressure down to atmosphere and then this is baffles inside it's a silencer and when it's running you can hardly hear it i mean you can hear it but it is not the screaming noise that you would expect coming out of there if we didn't have the pulse go silencer okay Okay, so this is our blast valve here. This is our, our main valve that goes into the turbine. This is gonna remain closed because we need to make sure that we, we do our blast and we get rid of any slag or any sludge or anything that's, that's in the line. Uh, so we're gonna control the blast through this globe valve here and we're gonna run it up to 3,000 kilograms per hour. Okay, so I've opened up another drain off of our main steam header and the condensate's going to run down and come over to the other side of the turbine and it'll go into the basin that we have. Okay, I'm about to open up uh, one of the two block valves that we have for the main steam that's going to go into the turbine and go through the blast valve. Okay, now we're on the second valve. We're going to start to open the second valve. Okay, so we're over at our MCC and the MCC turbine lab. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that we have our cooler energized uh, for our, our oil pump. So we used our, our oil for our auxiliaries for lube oil on, on, our, on our turbine and we have to make sure that we keep that cool. So there's, a, there's fin fans that are up on the roof and we have to make sure they're energized. So right now it is on and it is in hand. So we've, we've, turned, we've energized the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the starter to the, uh, to the breaker panel. Okay, so we're over at the disconnect for our damper actuator control. So we, you saw that we, we energized from our MCC up to here, so now we need to get the equipment operating. No and no lights come on. There are the fans on now. Yeah. Okay, so if you have a look at the screen, this is our turbine page uh, that we have open right now. And if you look at where the steam plant is, you'll see the header pressure. It looks like that uh, flow meter probably needs to be zero. Um, so uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to look at the flow on the flow meter and then I'm going to bring it up to 3000 kilograms per hour for the blow. Okay guys, I'm starting to open up the blow valve, so we're going to try and bring it up to 3,000 kilograms per hour for 20 minutes. And we bring it up slowly, we don't want to shock our uh, steam plant and the boiler. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to 3,000 kilograms now.
Okay guys, so we started our blast. If you have a look at the stack, you can see there's our steam being released. It's going through the turbine or uh, bypassing the turbine and going out the stack. Okay, so we've just finished our blow, so now I'm going to close in the blowdown valve. After that, we need to warm up the exhaust. So what we've done is we've warmed up the main steam header to the turbine. We're going to have to do the same thing with the exhaust back to the load condenser. And we step everything so we don't do it, uh, we don't do anything fast. We're going to step it so that we don't shock the boiler. Okay, so we've finished our blowdown, and now what we need to do is we need to close in the main header again, and then we need to open up our main valve that goes into our turbine. And the reason that we do this is what we're going to do is we're going to run this on the bypass just to get it turned over and uh, start to move on a lower speed. Um, and we will we'll be controlling it using this valve here instead of using the governor control. Um, but before we do that, we need to warm up our exhaust line. The same thing that we've, we've done with warming up our HP steam, our 250 pound line, we have to do the same now with the exhaust. So what we'll do for the exhaust is we'll crack the casing drains. So we'll crack them. And then what we need to do is we'll get our operator to open up uh, the exhaust valve uh, that comes from uh, downstairs in the uh, in the boiler house and what we'll do is we'll use the back pressure to warm up our uh, exhaust lines just like we did with the HP so but before we do that I'll safe this out and I'll put this back into the state it needs to be in before we go to the next step So I'm going to close off this valve and then I'll close off the other valve and then we'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay, so I've isolated the main steam header and now I'm going to open up our, our main steam valve that lets our steam into our turbine. You'll hear a little bit of steam coming through because there's a little bit left in the header, so I'm just going to leave it cracked. Okay, so now we're going to start warming up our exhaust line. So the first thing we have to do is crack open our bypass on our, on our main exhaust header that comes from the turbine. And it's already open. <laughs> and it was already open. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back this in um, so that it's open about three turns. And that's about three turns right there. Okay, so we have some pressure, some back pressure that's come into our exhaust line and right now we are draining the condensate from the exhaust line and it, there is a lot of condensate. You can probably hear it. 
So if you have a look at our gauge here, this is our exhaust pressure, and we want to get it up to about one bar, uh, 100 kPa roughly. So uh, we're just waiting right now. We're still, we have our casing drains open, and you can see we're still getting condensate coming through the turbine. Okay, so now we have warmed up our exhaust line all the way from our 15 pound header all the way back to the turbine. So if we have a look at our pressure gauge for our exhaust, you'll see that we're sitting right around one bar. And that's where we want to be. We want to be around that 15 pounds, right? So this is all good now. This is all warmed up. We have our casing drains that are, that are slightly cracked. So we're getting some steam that's going through the turbine. Okay. And we're ready to go to the next step. So the next step is start the glycol pump. Well, we already did. So we left that running. That's when we went over to the MCC and started the pump. And there's also, uh, we, we need to check our oil reservoirs and our strainers in and around the turbine. So on the next stage, we want to go and check our, our oil levels and our strainers and everything. So if we have a look at the turbine, there's our lube oil, there's our differential pressure. We're not running right now, so it's not going to show anything. Uh, that's our uh, auxiliary lube oil pump. It's an electric motor. This is our cooler here for our lube oil system. So we can cool it. And we have a mechanical pump here, which once this turbine gets up to a certain speed, uh, it'll take over and it'll, it'll manage the lube oil that's flowing through the pump, and the electric motor will shut off. That's our auxiliary. So we have our strainers are here. We make sure our strainers are in place. Um, you can see that we can go either, either way with them so we could replace one on the fly. Okay, let's walk around the turbine and have a look at our reservoir. Make sure we got oil in our reservoir. And we can see here on the reservoir that our oil level looks good. Okay, so the electric lube oil motor that I showed you on the turbine, the disconnect for it is on the wall here. So we have to make sure that this is in the auto position. And that means it'll be able to run in auto from the control system uh, of, of the turbine. So we won't be running that in hand. Okay, the next step is we need to start our lube oil pump. We need to get our auxiliaries up and running before we start thinking about turning over the turbine. So right now I'm on the turbine screen, so I need to pick the lube oil screen. And a couple things that we need to look at here. The oil temperature needs to be between 15 and 40 degrees C. Right now it's at 21.1 at degrees C, so we're good there. And our oil pressure needs to be uh, above uh, greater than 0.7 bar and right now it's sitting low because we're not we're not running so the next thing is is I need to go and start our lube oil motor and that's our auxiliary so I'm going to hit the start button now you can see that it's come up it said it's running and now you can see that our our oil pressure is coming up So now we have our auxiliaries running, we have our oil system lubricating our turbine. And you can see in our gauge here, there's our lube oil. And you can see that our pressure is uh, about 1.3, 1.4 bar. And if we come over here, now we can also see that our, our differential is sitting there at about uh, Looks like about 1.4, 1.5 bar on our differential, which is across our filter. Temperature, and it looks like it's in Fahrenheit, so it's pretty much about uh, 70, pretty close to 70 or 20 degrees C. So our loop system is up and running, and if you have a look closely, you can see our auxiliary loop oil motor is turning. You can see that shaft there. So that's going to be running whenever we're at, at, at low speeds. We need to make sure that, the, that all the equipment is lubricated. So therefore, that's why we run our auxiliary motor uh, at low speeds. Once we get up to 
a higher speed. I, I, I believe it's, don't, I'll have to look at the procedure, but I believe it's 1500 RPM. Uh, then what's going to happen is the mechanical will take over and we'll, we'll be lubricating the equipment with the mechanical pump and our auxiliary pump will shut off. Okay, also on the back of our turbine panel, uh, we also have our transmitters for our main steam, our exhaust pressure, and our blue oil pressure. And that will be going back to our, our uh, turbine controller. Okay, so we've warmed up all of our lines, and now we're ready to start our sequence to bring our turbine on online. So this is our generator panel here. And what we need to do now is we need to hit our start button and we need to reset our lockout relay trip reset. Okay. Once we do this, now we're on a timer. We need to get the turbine up to uh, 800 RPM and uh, we have 50 minutes to do it. So once we do the start, then we're on the timer. Now we got 50 minutes. Okay, the next step is we have to go to our turbine page and we have to ensure that we have all of our start permissives. Here's all our start permissives, our lube oil, lockout, uh, bearing RTD, speed sensor, turbine speed, uh, circuit breakers that are closed or open. You'll see that there's CB2 and 42 CB2. They're not made and the reason is because they are the ties. So that's the tie breaker. But everything else here looks good. Okay, so now we are ready to start our turbine. When we start our turbine, what's going to happen is we're going to have a oil relay that needs to be activated. So once I hit the start button, uh, we're going to run in and we're going to have a look at that oil relay and you'll see the linkage come up off of the switch and that'll allow us to continue with our start mode. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the start button on the turbine now. So one, two, three, start. We've got our oil relay has come up off the switch, and now we need to engage our, our trip lever. Trip lever has been engaged, and so we're ready to go to the next step. So we're at the point where we're, we're able to get ready to turn our turbine over and start to spin our turbine. And the way we control the speed of the turbine is through our governor. It has a linkage here, the signal will come here from our uh, controller, this is a woodwork governor, and it would adjust the vanes going in and out of the turbine to let more or less steam in to control the speed. Uh, the speed, you can see that we have a, a tachometer here, and we also have a tachometer for our speed indicator here on our turbine panel. And we have a pickup that would go back to our controller and it would move the linkage back and forth to control how much steam is going through the turbine and control the speed of the turbine. Okay, you might notice that there's two shafts that we have here. We have one shaft that's coming off of the steam turbine itself. It goes through a reduction here and then we have a shaft here that is turning the generator. The ratio between the shafts is 2.7 to 1. Therefore, normal operating speed would be 1800 RPM on the generator and roughly 4800 RPM on the steam turbine. When we're taking our measurements, we're always looking at the, at the, uh, at the speed of the generator, not the speed of the turbine. Okay, 
we are ready to start our turbine. Uh, when we start our turbine, we just don't go up to full speed. Uh, we have to warm everything up and get everything moving. Uh, all the parts need to be lubricated and we need to do it in a, in a procession that we're not going to stress anything or any metal. So we have to do what's called rampant soaks. So the first part of it is, is just to warm up the equipment and get it turning over. Um, and if you have a look at, at the chart there, you'll see that we're going to go up in steps. So we're going to go up to, first we're going to warm up for 10 minutes, then we're going to go to 10%, uh, which is uh, 180 RPM. And you can see that the time here is 20 minutes, and then we'll have a five minute interval, and we'll ramp up to 900 RPM, and another five minutes up to 1530. And then finally, another five minutes, we'll go up to rated speed at 1800 RPM. So it's going to take us 30 minutes to get our turbine up to rated speed. Okay, as per the warm-up procedure, we want to bring the turbine up to a rated speed, slowly. So we're going to bring it up to 10% of the rated speed. We're going to bring it up to 180 RPM. Um, we're not going to open up the main valves at this point. What we're going to do is we're just going to have steam enter the turbine through the bypass. That way we can control it manually. Um, we're able to control it manually up to 1,000 RPM. Once we get to 1,000 RPM, that's where the governor will take over and it'll control it. So what we're going to do again, we're, I'm just going to open up the bypass and we're going to slowly bring it up to 180 RPM. Okay, so we've been uh, running uh, a little bit above 180 RPM for about 10 minutes. So now we're going to go to the next step. So we're going to go up to uh, between 900 and 1000, but we'll probably just take it up to 1000 and we'll let the governor take over. The set point for the governor is set at 1000 RPM. get up to around 700 rpm on the bypass and then we'll open up the main valve.
we've been running at a thousand RPM for five minutes on our ramp and soak schedule. Now we're going to use the governor to control the speed at a, at a higher speed. We have another five minutes to ramp and soak at 1530 RPM. So we're going to go from the control panel and we're going to give it a signal to send the governor to control at 1530. Speeds up to 1400 RPM. Our lube oil auxiliary pump is going to shut down when we hit 1500. That's the set point. And then what's going to happen is our mechanical pump will be up to speed and it'll be looking after all of the lube oil. And you'll see the AC lube oil pump will shut, shut off. Now the AC pump is shut off, now we're on the mechanical pump. Okay, so now we're on the soap period, 1530 RPM. Uh, that's another five minutes before we can take it up to rated speed at 1800 RPM. Regarding the AC lube oil pump, if we were to trip, that pump would come on because we'd still need to lubricate all the bearings and all the equipment. So the AC loop pump is an auxiliary pump. Obviously, if we trip, the mechanical pump will no longer be in service, so we have to turn on the AC loop oil pump. Okay, we've finished our soak at 1530 RPM. Now we're gonna go to the rated speed for the generator of 1800 RPM. So on the panel, we'll go ahead at the off station, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll initiate that raise to 1800, which is the speed that we operate at. So fellas, we have the turbine enclosed for a reason. You might hear that noise. We'll see what happens when the door closes. You could almost go to sleep now. Okay, so we're up to rated speed for the generator. So the generator is spinning right now, but we're not producing any electricity because we haven't turned on the excitation. So we need to be able to uh, initiate the excitation voltage through the, uh, the AVR, the auto automatic voltage regulator. What it's gonna do is it's going to uh, determine a current that needs to go onto the stator in order for us to produce voltage. So the next step is for us to turn on the ADR. Okay, we're on the generator page, so you can see there's our ABR control. So right now, if you have a look at that, and if you pan back a little bit, you look at our generator voltages, 
uh, on our three phases, A, B, and C. And right now, you're, there really isn't much there. There's no current. Uh, and that's because we have no excitation on the generator. So now we need to turn on our ABR. And now you should see the voltages rise. Okay, we're on our generator overview page. You can see that here's our, our generator here. This is the switch gear that it's going through. And on the other side is our load bank. So in, in the electrical world, red is closed and green is open. It's the opposite of what we look at on instrumentation. So right now, our generator is disconnected from our load bank. It's also disconnected from our tiebreaker where we'd be able to put power onto the grid. Okay, fellas, this is our switch gear here in our, in our turbo generator building. One thing that you always do whenever you go to an MCC or any switch gear, you guys that are electricians will know this, it should have a single line diagram on it. If you're going to open and close a breaker, sometimes it's very easy to have, get one number or letter changed on it. There could be a long uh, list of, of uh, cubicles uh, throughout the, or circuit breakers throughout uh, switch gear and MCCs. And if you're off one number and you open and close the wrong breaker, well, you don't want to do that. So you always want to check against your single line diagram. So the breaker that we want to uh, uh, work on or we want to close is CB1. CB1 is the circuit breaker that is between the generator and the load bank because what we want to do is we want to simulate a load onto the turbine now. So let's have a look at that single line. So let's have a look at the single line and I'm looking around. Okay, there's uh, CB6, CB4, C, uh, CB1 is here. Okay, there's our generator, there's our load bank. And that's the circuit breaker there. Okay, so that's the one that we want to close. So let's have a look. So you always want to stand out of the way when you're opening and closing a breaker. And this one needs to be reset. So we need to reset it. And then we need to turn it on. Okay, CB1 is on. Let's go and have a look at the screen. Okay, so we can see now that CB1 is turned red, which means that that circuit breaker is closed. We also have another breaker here. We need to enable that to close that breaker, and then we will have power between our generator and between our load bank. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the close initiate button, and then we will energize all the way through our generator up to our load bank, then we'll be able to simulate a load on our turbine. And the breaker is closed, and you can see that we're all the way through to our load bank. So before we can energize our, our load bank, we have to ensure that our, our disconnect on our circuit breaker is made. So I'm checking now and it is on, so we have power from our switch gear to our load bank. So in the previous video, you guys might have noticed that we have a load bank that's on the roof, and it's resistive loads only. Um, if we harken back to power factor, uh, we have to look at power factor when we have loads that aren't linear. In other words, if we have nonlinear loads. But if we have res purely resistive loads, they're linear. Therefore, the power factor would be one, because they're linear loads. So they're not inductive loads, they're not capacitive loads. So that's what we're doing with our load bank. We have to turn our load bank on. Never ever put it in auto, because if you already have a load uh, selected, it'll automatically go to that load. So we always want to turn it on to manual. Right now, there's no load on here. Now we can go and simulate load on our STG through our load bank, purely resistive loads, and see what the effects will be on the boiler because now we're going to put stress on the boiler. As we increase our loads, we're going to have to increase our steam flow through the boiler to maintain our 1800 RPM. 
So before we start to load down our turbine, let's have a look at the generator panel. What's on here? So we have our generator volts, our sync scope. Uh, that's what we would see when we synchronize to hydro, to the grid. Uh, before we close our tiebreaker, uh, we need to be synchronized with the phasing of the hydro. So this, the sync scope, you guys will be able to see once we do a synchronization. Bus volts, bus frequency, 60 hertz. Our RPMs, you can see we're sitting at 1800 and the generator frequency is also at 60 hertz. There's our phase voltage. Uh, what else is on here? There's our current. And there's our KBA and our K bar and our kilowatts. There's our average. Again, there's our volts. There's our lockout reset again. And if we were going to try and synchronize manually, and we won't do that, we'll do it automatically, you would be able to do it through these buttons here, which we won't be doing. And then here's our relay settings would be down on the bottom of our relay. They would pick up and trip out on uh, under voltage, uh, over voltage, uh, ground fault, those sort of things. Okay, everything's running generators turning over we've closed all of our circuit breakers and now we're going to put some load onto the generator so right now i've turned it turned it on it's on manual it says control is on and now here's our switch here i'm going to add 60 kilowatts of, of load onto the load bank go back to the governor page Notice our power factor is one because they're purely resistive loads that we have on the load bank. If I go to my turbine page, now our steam plant, our, our steam flow is increased in order to maintain our 1800 RPM so we can maintain our voltage and our AVR will have changed as well. So we're sitting now at six volts, 0.41 amps. And as we increase our load, we'll see that our automatic voltage regulator is gonna change the excitation. Okay, you can also see that now we have some generator currents, now that we have a load on the generator. Okay, so we have 60 kilowatts load. Uh, you can see that our generator speed is being maintained at 1800 RPM and you'll see that our PID control is now higher. We were around 35% before and now our output to our governor is up to around 40%. And you can see it's modulating because it's a PID control. Uh, if you have a look at our turbine speed and our generator, you can see the reduction happening here and we're maintaining the 1800 RPM on our generator. Uh, our steam plant, we're still sitting pretty much, our plant master is sitting uh, almost exactly where we have our set point. So there was a little bit of a bump here when we, when we added that uh, load. And our steam flow has increased to around 3,100 kilograms per hour. And you guys will see this as we do this live. Okay, so we've got 60 kilowatts on it now. Let's add another 120 kilowatts when we'll see what happens to our steam flows get over on the screen and look at the steam flow. So now we're up to 4,000 kilograms per hour. Uh, you can see our header pressure from our plant master. It, it's dropped slightly, but it looks like we got pretty good control on our uh, on our, our uh, steam steam header pressure through our plant master. Uh, we're still maintaining our 1,800 RPM. Our 
output now from our PID has come up to about 46, 47 percent. Of course, it's going to bounce around as it's controlling the uh, well, controlling the speech. Um, we're still maintaining our 1800 RPM on the generator. And let's have a look. Okay, so now we're up to 138, 139 amps. Our AVR, our excitation field current is uh, 560 milliamps by the looks of it. And we're up to eight, eight to nine volts on our field voltage. Again, if we look at our power factor, we're sitting there at one as we're just putting uh, resistive loads on to the generator. Okay, I'm going to drop 120 kilowatts of load and uh, we'll see what happens to our header pressure and our steam flow. So now you can see that our header pressure has gone up, our steam flow has dropped off considerably. And also what's interesting is, is our governor has basically worked really well with his PID control and is maintaining that 1800 RPM set point. The generator page. Now we have no load, so we have no current on the generator. And our generator voltages are what they are right now, and there's our, there's our ADR field current and its voltage. Okay guys, so the next step for us is to synchronize our generator onto the grid with hydro. But before we do that, we have to ensure that we have our load bank isolated and turned off. So we'll go load off, turn it into the off position. Okay, fellas, so in, in order for us to synchronize onto the grid, uh, we have to go through our tiebreaker. So there's a couple things that need to happen. First of all, I need to close CB2, which is on our switch here. Uh, once that's done, then I need to uh, do a synchronization. And I'm not going to do a manual sync, but we will sync in auto. And once it syncs in auto, what's going to happen is the tiebreaker is going cl to close, and then we will be putting power onto the grid. So we'll be supplying power to the grid and we'll be using less power from the substation uh, where we're getting our power from hydro. Okay, so let's have a look. Where's our CB2? And it's right there, okay, and that's for the tie, okay, so I have to reset it. And then I have to turn it on. Nope, it's reset, and now I have to turn it on. Okay, if we notice our tie breaker, CB2 is now closed, and our breaker 42 CB2 is, uh, is still open. Uh, so the next step is for us to put in a set point of uh, what we want to produce for power before we synchronize over to hydro. Okay, so the next step is we have to enter a power set point. So I'm going to enter 100 kilowatts. The maximum that our generator can produce is 300 kilowatts. We won't go that high, but I'll, I'll put in 100 kilowatts for a set point. And there's our set point now at 100 kilowatts. Okay, so, so now I'm going to hit the 25A button and that's going to automatically do the synchronization to hydro. So once we sync, uh, this tiebreaker will close and then we'll be putting power on the grid. So we'll be using power from the generator 
and using less power from hydro. So we're going to have a look at the sync scope uh, because I'm going to go ahead and do the automatic sync. I know there's some of you that have always wanted to trip a plant and hit a red button. And normally when you guys are here, I'll ask for some volunteers to see who wants to trip the plant. But seeing how you're not here, you'll have to live through me. And so now I'm going to trip our turbine off our emergency stop button here. There's a couple ways of doing it. I can go and pull the trip lever in here, or I can go on the screen and there's also an ESD on the screen. So let's go ahead and hit the emergency stop and see what happens. You can hear the turbine winding down. And what's happened now is the trip valve here on the turbine has shut. So there's no steam going through that turbine, which also means there's no exhaust going through it, which also means there's, there's nowhere really for this 250 pound steam to go right now. Uh, there, there is through the 150 header and the headers that we looked at, but all of a sudden now you've got this load on the boiler and now there's nothing. Let's have a look at the headers. You can see our flows down to next to nothing, and now we're up to almost 18 and a half bar. So we should normally run around 17.3, uh, somewhere around there bar. So we're up to 18.3, and it looks like our control strategy is working pretty good because it looks like it's turning around. So we were running around 2,000 kilograms per hour and we tripped it with 2,000 kilograms going through the turbine, down to nothing. Okay, so today what we did was we brought up a, a steam turbo generator and ran it. Uh, we uh, put load on it, we synced it to hydro, and then we went ahead and tripped it when it was operating. Uh, so by doing this, we've been stressing our boiler with increasing and decreasing loads the whole time. And also, we've proven that our emergency stops work as well. And that would be something that you would normally do at least once a year on your boiler anyway. Um, when we do this live with you guys, we'll go and do another trip, and we'll look at the steam headers at the same time and see what happens to all of our steam headers when we trip the boiler. And we might trip it at a much higher rate than 2,000 kilograms per hour. And I'm sure you'd like to see what would happen to our turbine and to our boiler if, say, we were at 6,000 kilograms. So we'll see if we can do that when we go live.